want to show you is for supervisory management, everything is about perspective. The supervisory manager, if they're the person that's kind of stuck in the middle. And I have one of these, um, I got this, this is actually a uh, one of those uh, Bernie things, one of those lamp things you put the you put the scent inside and you burn it and turn it on. And this is the rocks. You guys have seen this rock formation in a lot of management textbooks. And there's a reason for that. The reason is the supervisory manager is this rock in the middle. So think of it this way. This is your CEO. The CEO is at the top and it's a smaller rock because it's not as many. There's not as many CEOs, COOs, that's your corporate, so corporate um, corporate operating officer, your CSO, corporate social officer, okay? And then you've got at the bottom here the bigger rock. This is the bigger rock. Actually, this is the heater, so it's kind of funny. This is everybody at the bottom. This is all of us, okay? All of us regular people who maybe aren't quite in management yet. So there's a lot of people that make up the bottom tier, and in the middle then is your supervisory manager. So they're not only responsible for holding up the CEO, don't you just love that analogy? They're also responsible for keeping the people here that are at the lower level satisfied. So think of a supervisory manager as that. Someone who not only has to be responsible for working with the CEO, and we call the C-suite, C-suite, S-U-I-T-E, the C-suite. That's the chief executive officer, chief operating officer, chief social opera, uh, officer. There's even a chief information officer, a chief financial officer. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of these officers. And those are the people that are at the top. Those are the main decision makers. They're the strategy planners and the decision makers. Your supervisory manager falls here in the middle. Like I said, they have to take care of the people on the bottom and they also have to support the managers at the top. So I hope this is a pretty good analogy for you on what we're dealing with in supervisory managers, okay? So different perspectives. This particular picture was taken at Whedon Island. I like to go out there, I like to run, I go out on the pier, my kids and I have kayaked out there, and this is, the, this is a tower. So this is the tower, and I'm gonna show you the close-up version of the tower. But this is a picture taken from the fishing pier that's out there. So now if we move forward, here's the tower. So here's the up-close picture of the tower. And the reason why I'm putting this on here for you is I got this idea when I took a look at it, this is, reminds me of the levels of management and what it takes for the supervisor, like we just said, to hold up the CEO, the upper management, okay? To make sure that the lower level is also being taken care of, okay? So they fit right here in the middle. They've got to again support the CEO, and again, they have to take care of and nurture and grow the lower level manager. So I thought that was a great analogy. I hope you love this picture. Um, I love going out there to run. It's it's great. And this time now where they're telling us not to go anywhere, uh, large groups, parks are still open. So go out there, go run and have a good time. So let's talk about the need for management. Wherever a group of people work together in some kind of structure, you need, you need goals. You need something that bridges everybody together because we all have a common objective, a common goal, a common reason for being a part of that organization. And by organization, I mean the business. We call them an organization because they are a living and breathing group of people. You would not have a business without employees. You would not have a business without structure, without something, a pyramid, some kind of tier system. And we'll talk more about that. And a tier system is just building Think of building blocks when you played with building blocks as a kid and you built the building blocks and you made sure that you worked from the bottom up and as you got closer to the top, it might fall down. And then what do you got to do? You got to rebuild back up to the top and it's very important. So think of management as blocks and you can build those blocks and build that strong foundation at the bottom and then continue to add to the top. And as the organization grows or the business grows, that's where you become more successful. So we want that foundation and then we want to build upon that. So basic organizational activities for any business 
our operations, that's producing the product, okay, or the service, selling the product, distributing the product, and we talk a lot about this in our Intro to Business class. Let me know if you have any questions about um, developing products or shipping products or manufacturing. Uh, that's something I can help you with if you'd like. And then financing, you need money. So for to run a business, you produce your product, you market your product, you get it to customers, and then you finance. The basic resources of any organization, all management is responsible is for the resources of a business. You cannot have a business unless you have resources. And in this case, it's human resources, which are your employees, okay? Physical resources would be the buildings, which would be the equipment that you need, the physical manufacturing stuff that you need to build your product or service. And then financial resources, money, credit, okay? Here's a chart, and if you take a look at this, you can see that management then, combining these resources, humans, physical buildings, okay, financial, turns into a productive system, which then leads to organizational objectives. And don't get confused, an objective is a goal. So what is your objective or your goal for your organization? We all have goals in life. We set out our goals and we complete our tasks to reach our goals. Right now, our goal is to finish college. Our goal is to take classes so we can build our skills, so we are more hireable, so we can go out and get a job, we learn new skills, we learn new information, and we get a better job or a promotion. Some of us are here just for the degree. It's a very personal thing. Some of us are here to sharpen our skills and really to become more successful. The more we know, the more we can talk about, the more we can grow, the more that we'll be more successful and we'll be more pleased with our personal development. Here's, here's one of these pyramids. So this is how our top management tiers work. Again, we talked about this, the top managers, the CEOs, they're at the very top. And the reason why this is a small uh, piece of the pyramid is because it is a smaller piece. You've got a smaller amount of the CEOs, of the top managers. And then you've got middle managers, supervisory management, the first line managers and team managers, and then the operative employees. That's most of us right now. If you have never been a manager, then you've probably just been an employee and you've never really ever bridged that management, management level. But some of us have been managers. So if you have been a manager, then you're familiar with the challenges that come with being a leader. So not only these days do you have to be smart, you have also got to be uh, uh, inspirational. So you've got to know your stuff. You've got to know your management um, perspectives. And you also have to be, um, you know, motivate, motivate people. You need to get people on board with your plan. So this is a really good idea to give you an idea. The higher up the authority goes, the higher up the responsibility. But again, right here in this middle management, Right now, the current trend is that supervisory managers are taking more of this middle management um, road, okay? They're doing, they're helping the CEO grow the business, and they're also, again, taking care of the employees that are going to move up this pyramid to become CEOs. So a good supervisor is going to be good with training. They're going to understand the people below them, and they're going to understand their managers above them. Okay, so functions performed by management. If you look on the right here, these are the four functions. Well, actually there's five in this particular book because they've added staffing. They've added staffing to this for a supervisory manager. That may not be the goal of a top manager or a lower level manager, but the supervisory manager is going to be the one that is ultimately responsible for staffing. So we've got planning, strategic planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. Controlling is operations management. That's being in charge of everything it takes to build a business from step A to step C, okay? 
here's another chart. This just kind of gives you an idea. This is right out of your textbook, right out of chapter one. And it gives you an idea of how these all work together. We start with planning, we move to organizing, and as you can see, this, this triangle in the middle is showing you that these are all interrelated. Planning, you need to discuss strategies for hiring, for staffing, organizing and controlling. What kind of resources do I have available to me will tell me how many people I can hire, how much I can grow. So all of these are intertwined, okay? And again, the supervisor has to be the one who not only plans, they organize, they have to make sure they have the right staff, and they are that leader, that guiding person. You know leaders in your life that you look up to. There are people in your life that you just know are natural leaders. They could be your parents, your friends, a grandparent, a boss. We've all worked with bosses who have been great leaders, and we can really talk about that. We've also worked with some leaders who are not such great uh, bosses. So we can, we can talk more about that. So just to give you an idea, here are the skills that are required for all managers for them to be considered effective. And effective simply means you're good at what you do. You understand what you're doing and you're good at what you do. Conceptual skills, this is the big picture. This is often referred to as vision. Human skills, you've got to be able to work with people. You cannot be a good manager if you don't know how to work with people. Administrative, procedures, paperwork, all the things that it takes, and then technical skills. And the technical skills are exactly what they say. They're technical. Are you able to utilize the tools, the technical tools to run your business? Anything from software to um, barcode systems to anything that the manager needs. And if the manager, maybe that's not their strong point, they can hire somebody or teach somebody. It's important in this technology age that we train people in technology. So if it's not our strong point as a leader, we need to make sure that we have people on our team who are good at technology, okay? Some of the reasons for um, selecting inside candidates, okay, that's where supervisors, where do they come from? A lot of time they come from internal, okay? We promote somebody. Somebody is working in the organization, they do a really good job, they're a great team leader, they get promoted, moved up, okay? And reasons why, they understand the organization already, they're not coming in from the outside. They have a first-hand knowledge of the employees, okay? And it serves as a reward and an incentive for people who want to be a manager. If you work for any organization, you usually will start at the bottom. And if you show great interest and you really want to be a manager and you work really hard, chances are you will be promoted and you will be a manager someday. So these are things to think about. I want you to go back. One of the assignments this week is to reflect upon managers and do you think you have what it takes to be a manager and we'll talk more about that okay they also some of the mistakes though that we do make could be selecting employees that maybe aren't the best performers okay and maybe we maybe we didn't train those people so those who are moving from the bottom into the management position we may not have trained them in the best way so this is a something to think about and these are issues that we can always um, combat. So why do they fail? I hate to talk about failing, but failing is important. We learn from failing, okay? So I don't want you to think of failing as a bad thing. Think of failing as an opportunity to learn something new. You know, we have to fail from the first time that we're really little and we want to get up and start walking, we fall down. My son is 11 years old this week, and I remember when he was little, he fell all the time. He banged his head on the ground all the time. It was horrible. My husband and I were, were always worried and following him around, but what he learned from that was you got to get up and you have to keep moving. Not one time did he ever, after all the crying, decide that he wanted to give up. And to this day, he just works as hard as he can and he's doing really well. And he fails, 
I know that he just recently got a bad grade on one of his papers and he was very upset and he cried, but he's gonna pick himself up and he's gonna move on and he's gonna learn from that, that mistake. So some of the things that can hurt a supervisor are bullying, being arrogant, unwilling to listen to people in the organization, unable to get people to work as a team. And this is really hard. As a professor, I have some students who are very happy to work in a team and some students that just don't want to be in a team. So there's a drawback to working in teams, but we can get you motivated and get you excited about working with a team. If you work with, with the right team, it can be a very rewarding experience, okay? Uh, betrayal of teams trust, Delegation. If you never heard of delegation before, delegation is simply giving tasks away. Taking the time to teach somebody to do something and then taking your hands off and giving them the opportunity to do what they need to do. And we'll talk more about delegation later on in the course, probably week four or week five. So um, hands off, not being hands off, not addressing performance issues. Lack of that technical skill that we just talked about. Lack of being able to even admit that you don't have technical skill and you need help, okay? Boss-related issues, not willing to get along with people, and unwilling to disagree. A supervisory manager, like we mentioned with the, with the rock formation, remember, they have people below them that they have to support. And then they've got this small group of really strong leaders on top of them. So they're going to fall in the middle every time. And the only way for them to come out successful is to be willing to disagree with something that might not be working. Because what happens? What happens if this doesn't, if these don't work? You can't have this. This, this is not good. This is unsturdy. So if the supervisor doesn't have the tools or can't disagree with the things that aren't working, then they can't build that strong foundation. So it's very important to build that strong foundation. Okay, here's the relationships. This gives you an idea that supervisors are pretty much in charge of just about everybody. Their peer supervisors, the employees, the direct managers, other managers, they have quite a lot to take care of. Okay, and we'll jump over those. So the goals of the supervisor then, production, maintaining quality, keeping the costs low, maintaining the morale, okay? And that's just keeping people happy is what that means, okay? Serving as the management representative and acting as the spokesperson for not only the employees, but also the higher up team, okay? So that's what I've got for the supervisory thing. Oh, supervisors, they stand out, okay? They stand out. Here's this guy all on the ice, all by himself, okay? Getting a suntan. <laughs> He's doing real well. They stand out. The ones that can handle technology, that can motivate people to do the things that they need to do, and still at the same time keep everything moving very smoothly are the ones to stand out. 